A trained boxer throwing a punch is capable of generating around 5,000 newtons of force. That's roughly half the force that a one-ton car exerts on the ground. A martial artist delivering a well-executed kick, meanwhile, can exert around 9,000 newtons. At the same time, the top baseball pitchers are capable of throwing balls at a speed of over 100 miles an hour. That's insane. How is the human body capable of generating such incredible power? The answer has a lot to do with a function of your body that you may not be aware of, the Serap effect. The Serap effect refers to the diagonal arrangement of many muscles in your torso. Specifically, these are the rhomboids, the serratus anterior, the external obliques and the internal obliques. Together, these muscles wrap around the back and form an X shape across the abdominal region at the front. The resulting image is similar to the Mexican serap, which is what gives the effect its name. In short, our musculature is designed to link the left shoulder to the right hip and vice versa. This effect can be seen as soon as you throw a ball. You'll find that you naturally raise your throwing hand back, pulling your shoulder back as you do, and that your hip on the opposite side comes forwards. What you're effectively doing here is winding up the body. You are stretching the muscles responsible, which in turn then allows you to exert the maximum amount of power when you put your entire body into the throw. This is as opposed to keeping the body steady and simply throwing the ball with your arm, which puts a lot less mass behind the movement and involves far fewer muscles. The same thing is true for a great punch or kick. The power comes from the rotation of the entire body, which engages as much muscle mass as possible. This is absolutely key to the way the human body was designed to move. We see it when we walk. The left hip comes forwards as the right shoulder moves backwards, giving us a contralateral arm swing. We also see it when we look at the brain. The left side of the brain is primarily wired to control the right side of the body, and vice versa. It's a key factor in a huge number of sports, from a tennis serve to a javelin throw to a punch or a kick. This is why it is so extremely important that you train in the transverse plane, using movements that twist the body. So many conventional training programs completely ignore these muscles, which in turn means you are completely unprepared to deliver serious power from your limbs. So how can we do this? One of the best examples of all is to use a medicine ball throw and throw it using hip rotation. You can do this with a rotational throw or with a shot put throw. Either way, the medicine ball allows you to train power generation, as you can exert as much force as you want when slinging the heavy ball. Another excellent option is sledgehammer training. Hitting a tire with a sledgehammer again allows for ballistic strength in this range of motion. For developing strength, you can train using cable moves, like the wood chop or the cable punch out. Anti-rotational movements are also excellent for this, such as the one-handed push-up. Lizard crawls and other quadrupedal movements are also great examples of contralateral training and can similarly help to build strength in these areas, along with the intermuscular coordination necessary to engage them together. The Turkish get-up actually has similar benefits. In my last video, I explained how Bruce Lee's core stability ultimately allowed him to deliver more powerful punches by creating a rigid body in the kinematic chain. Some commenters ask whether this would make them stiff and rigid. Wouldn't that be counterproductive? Especially as a martial artist is supposed to be loose until the moment of impact. And what about martial arts tricking or gymnastics? But of course, the purpose of core stability training is not to permanently lock yourself in a rigid position. Instead, the aim is to give you that option. And it's by transitioning between loose and whip-like and then solid and tense that you can exert the maximum amount of force. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. In this case, you'll be loose as you relax and wind up the muscles, then contract at the moment of impact. Specifically, you'll tighten the core so that the fist can be driven into the target, and you'll clench the fist to harden the forearms and the surrounding region via irradiation. If you stayed loose at this point, the impact would lose some kinetic energy as your body reversed that twisting motion. The ultimate goal is perfect muscle control, so as to relax any muscle working in an antagonistic fashion while contracting the rest at the perfect moment to deliver maximum impact. Part of this power is achieved through another effect, called the stretch shortening cycle. This refers to the rebound effect that muscle has after being stretched. Of course, lengthening the muscle will always provide greater distance for power to be generated, but the key is speed. The faster you stretch and then shorten the muscle, the more power you're capable of generating. This is why you can jump much higher by swinging the arms up, squatting down, and then launching back up. This is called a counter movement jump versus simply jumping out of a squat position. The stretch shortening cycle is likewise something that can be trained, which is why using ballistic type exercises such as the medicine ball throw is particularly good for developing the kind of power that will translate into powerful throws and punches. This is also why kinetic linking is so important in martial arts. Throwing a punch and then placing your hips and shoulders in the perfect position for the next strike ready to generate the maximum amount of power 
and to utilise some of that stored kinetic energy. Grant recently posted a video on this subject that has been invaluable to my own training. It's absolutely fantastic, so go and check it out. And this is also why martial arts in particular translate so incredibly well to general athleticism. You can also find some more examples of training for the Serap Effect over on my Instagram at at the Bioneer. And if you like this kind of philosophical approach to training and human performance, then be sure to check out my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. You can find a link to that in the description down below, and there's currently a discount on seeing as everyone is trapped indoors at the moment and could probably use something to read. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you did, then please leave a like, a comment, and share it around. That helps me out immensely. Subscribe if you want to see more like this. And of course, I'll see you next time. Thanks a ton for watching, and bye for now.